Hi everyone, Rob here, welcoming you to the What's New in Fusion 360 for March 2021. As always, be sure to take a look through Kaching's blog, linked in the description below, for all the details like bug fixes and preview features. Now I know what you're thinking, who's the new guy? Well, today's theme is all about advancing the manufacturing capabilities of Fusion 360, which is driven by the integration of technology from our wider portfolio of products such as PowerMill and PowerInspect. So if you've ever watched an Autodesk PowerMill video, then you might recognize the voice, hence why I am kicking off this What's New video. So let's get into it. The ability to edit toolpaths after they've been calculated provides a huge productivity gain, especially when it comes to perfecting your result, which is why we've added the new Delete Passes feature alongside the toolpath trimming functionality to expand this capability in the machining extension. The Delete Passes feature, accessed via the Modify panel of the toolbar, allows the deletion of individual point-to-point -point segments, entire passes, or groups of toolpath passes, making it especially useful in situations such as toolpath overlaps, where it might have been previously difficult to identify the desired segments you want to remove using the polygon sketching within toolpath trimming. Instances such as small segments which are inefficient to cut and leave unwanted entry and exit marks, areas where the toolpath might venture into excessive amounts of stock, or regions where we might decide to cut with a different operation or tool, like the flat region in this steep and shallow toolpath, can all be removed quickly and efficiently. And since only the affected leads and links need recalculating and not the whole toolpath, this can save huge amounts of reprogramming time. Additionally, any edits we make will appear on the timeline, so we can visualize and modify the selections. What's more, assuming those passes still exist after any part or toolpath modifications, then Fusion will replay those edits again, saving you time and achieving the same result quality. Any unplayable edits where the toolpath differs to the original will be highlighted in yellow on the timeline. For inspection, coming out of preview, and thank you to everyone who gave feedback on this function, is the ability to change the tolerance colors for inspection results. Previously, Fusion 360 used the same colors, but two different conventions when it came to stock simulation and inspection results, which could be confusing. The new tolerance color option aims to reduce this confusion by using the same colors to mean the same things in both stock simulation and inspection results. For both stock simulation and surface inspection results, green continues to mean that the part is intolerance, blue means it is above the upper tolerance indicating excess material, and red means below the lower tolerance indicating a potential gouge. A legend at the bottom of the inspection results window and in the graphics window provide a quick reference to these values. For probe geometry, probe WCS, and manual inspection, intolerance features will be green, whilst out of tolerance features will be orange, whether that be relating to size or position. And of course, if you don't like the new colors, you can always switch it back in the preferences. Continuing with inspection, we have now enabled graphical reporting for many of the probe geometry features, such as holes, bosses, and channel widths, creating a graphical representation of the probed features as well as surface inspection. At the point of probe geometry feature creation, checking the print results checkbox will enable the generation of results for that feature on the controller, which once imported into Fusion 360 can be output into a graphical report. Whilst the machining extension might be required to create operations such as surface inspection, the ability to create reports is available for anyone inside base Fusion. This means that regardless of whether the machining extension was used, once the probing sequences have been created, they can be run on the machine and the reports can be output even in base fusion, which is especially useful if you are using the machining extension via flexible access or collaborating with somebody who has the machining extension. Graphical reports are quick to create and easy to read and understand, and with the option to upload to Fusion Team for archiving can help simplify and reduce your paper trail. And finally from me, another feature coming out of preview in our drive to improve the NC program experience is the ability to post your NC code to Fusion Team. The new Post to Fusion Team option, accessed through the NC Programs dialog, allows you to not only post code as a regular NC program, but automatically uploads that posted NC file to your Fusion Team, creating a much tighter integration to the cloud. And with its own revision control, the ability to promote and create links to the reference document, it's easier than ever to stay up to date with the latest NC file, go back to an earlier version, or share a link with the shop floor to download the NC file. Continuing the theme of advancing Fusion 360's manufacturing capabilities, here's Marty to talk about the integration of some of the technology from our True Composites products 
with the nesting and fabrication extension. Thanks, Rob. It sounds like those updates are important steps towards supporting some advanced workflows, and I'm excited to see we keep advancing our manufacturing capabilities. Like Rob mentioned, another big way we are continuing to advance Fusion's capabilities is through the launch of an extension for nesting and fabrication. You can access this extension through the Extension Manager with options for daily or monthly access. In the design workspace, Nest Preparation helps you filter parts to reduce overall model preparation time. Automatic detection recognizes sheet metal components with flat patterns, sketches, and everything else. You can also change a part's categorization in the list and make some modifications to how non-sheet metal and non-sketch parts are consumed later on. In the manufacturer workspace, you can jump right into nesting with no other setup if desired. Fusion will automatically create packaging to separate and nest parts based on material and thickness, allowing you to get to a nested result quickly if that's what you need. However, there are some tools to further optimize your nesting workflow. Component Sources gives further control over which parts will be nested. You can set global nesting parameters for each source and even add external documents not in the current design. This allows you to combine multiple jobs or subassemblies into a single job to increase material yield. Manage stock material in the process material library. Packaging material parameters will inform downstream nesting calculations, giving you greater control over nested results and insights into material usage and cost. Materials and their parameters can also be stored as presets for easy access to standard materials and best practices for your whole team. When you're ready to create the nesting study, the dialog box gives you a place to set job quantities, review source shapes and packaging materials, and set calculation parameters. Once you click OK, the nesting algorithm will get to work, nesting your parts based on the defined settings. You can always edit the nesting study to update any parameters. Once your nests are ready, right-click on any number of sheets, nests, or studies to compare the nested results. The Compare dialog gives a configurable overview of key metrics like cost and efficiency, as well as a preview of the nested sheets. You can configure the metrics and the sheet appearance in the upper right-hand corner of the Compare dialog. This quick and informative view can help with quoting jobs, as well as making purchasing decisions for material and packaging. Reports offer a more in-depth and printable way to view nesting metrics, including the nest sources and packaging and their parameters, nested sheets, and sheet part summaries. Reports also offer configuration through report templates and sections can be shown or hidden to adjust report length. Share and document nesting performance easily by saving the HTML report or printing to create a PDF or paper copy. But what if you just finished creating nests and realized you need to tweak a part design? That's not a problem. Nesting and fabrication in Fusion 360 is integrated alongside powerful CAD and CAM tools, and to make the most of this integration, it is also fully associative. Design changes only mark nests with the affected parts as out of date. To update the nest with the design changes, simply right-click on any out-of-date nodes and select Generate. The changes will automatically be consumed by the nesting algorithm. Of course, all of these tools come alongside the CAM capabilities in Fusion 360, giving you instant access to toolpath generation for a variety of CNC machines. Easily create manufacturing setups from nested sheets and start programming with our easy-to-use toolpath options for milling and cutting applications. 2D profiling operations support face selection to quickly select all contours that lie in the same plane for intelligent programming to save you time. When include stock is selected during nest creation, nested results include a sketch line to make remnant cuts simple. Just select that line as the contour. Of course, when you're ready to start production, we offer a full library of fast, free, and fully customizable post processors to get code to your machine closing the loop on the design, nesting, and fabrication process. You can also export a DXF to support a variety of industry workflows. For more information on using the nesting and fabrication extension, check out some tutorials linked in the upper right-hand corner. As always, we want to know what you think in the comments below or on the forum, 
and we would love to see what you make on social media. That brings us to the end of this update. Hopefully it's clear that we continue to be focused on advancing the manufacturing capabilities of Fusion 360 through these enhancements and additions. As Rob mentioned, be sure to check out Kaching's blog post for all the details like bug fixes and user submissions, as well as what's new in design, engineering, and electronics, all linked below. See you next time.